Filippo, it's always nice when we have the chance to sit down, relax, and talk. You know, uh, 2015 is winding down, and I'm curious, what do you think were the hottest topics in fertility in 2015? The hottest topics, I believe, have been uh, the, the efforts for clinicians and for the lab to improve the real aim of assisted reproductive techniques, which is the life birth of an healthy child. And uh, to do this, clinicians and also embryologists did their best to try, from one side, to personalize, control the virus stimulation with the aim to maximize the number of sites to be retrieved. And uh, from the lab side, to improve all those techniques, to even get them better, of uh, aimed to select the best embryo that will have the highest chance to implant. And these techniques are the time lapse, the morphological analysis of the embryos, but the morphological analysis of the embryo is not strictly correlated with the chromosomal status of, uh, of the embryo. So the, the time lapse, together with the chromosomal ana status analysis of the, of the embryos, then uh, so far is uh, the best way in the lab to select the embryo that has the highest chance to implant. So the 2015 aimed towards this direction. So it's really interesting because you've been in the practice of uh, yes. ART for a while. Yeah. And when you started, the, the practice was so different. Different, completely different. It, it was a numbers game of implanting more and hoping they take and seeing how many led to a live birth. And now you've almost switched the paradigm. Now it's, I want to only put in... Only one that has the highest chance to implant. And this is because of this, uh, I mean, we have to maximize the live birth rate from one side, but we have to maximize the, uh, the safety for the patient. And uh, the most important complication, one of the most important complications that we have in uh, assisted reproductive techniques is the multiple pregnancy. Is the, uh, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. So, from the clinical part of our job, we have to try to minimize, we have to try to reach zero, almost zero, risk of these two most important complications. So the expected outcome 10 years ago is now a side effect. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, yeah, it's I think that's great. Yeah. We transfer three, four embryos. I mean, it was a common practice to transfer four embryos. Now it's really bad medicine practice. So what about uh, the genetic screening in particular? So, so you talked a little bit about the time lapse. Um, how do you see uh, PGD and PGS really coming into their own now? Yes, PGD and PGS, uh, PGD uh, gives a very, very, very important contribution uh, to try to solve genetic diseases. I mean, when there are two, um, the, 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 the woman and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the man that are carrier of a genetic disease, then uh, there's a high chance that, the, uh, that the, the baby will be affected. So now we have the possibility to detect uh, uh, almost all of genetic diseases that are known. So this is a, a very important breakthrough uh, for the uh, safety of the newborns and also for the psychological safety of the couple. With regard to the PGS, this is what uh, I was telling before. The morphological <coughs> analysis of the embryo, even with, uh, with uh, uh, time lapse, is not yet maybe in the, in, the, in the future, in the next future, in the near future, is not yet enough to select the really best embryo. 
but it gives, of course, important information. It gives the information of uh, the embryo that has the highest chance to reach the blastocyst stage. But if we combine this analysis with the most effective so far analysis to try to assess the chromosomal status of the, of the blastocyst, then so far we have the most important way to select the embryo that has highest chance to implant. Thank you. That's a great picture of what we've seen in 2015. Filippo, let's take a look at what, what the future holds for ART. So there's a lot of research that goes on. We, we see ESHRAE, we see ASRM, we see really important research going on. Where do you see this research impacting clinical practice in the next years? Yes, this is a very good question and very important question because then 99.99% of clinicians have to deal every day with patients. So we have to try to, uh, to translate the uh, scientific research in the basic clinical practice, doing the compromise of optimizing the, uh, the, uh, the results of uh, ART, which is the live birth of an healthy child, but with the safety of the patient. So in a clinical routine, I believe that in the next year and in the next years, what clinicians should do, they have to try to personalize uh, as much as possible the controlled ovarian hyperstimulation. And so they have first to try to understand, to better understand the ovarian reserve of the patient. Then uh, we have to choose for that patient that we have in front of us the best stimulation protocol in order to maximize the number of oocytes that those ovaries can, can give. This sounds easy, but I mean, you have to have a lot of experience to, to, to try to do this. Because from one side, we have to retrieve uh, um, a good number of oocytes to try to have uh, a good number of embryos and to hope that amongst those good number of embryos there will be that or those embryos that will give a live birth. On the other side, we have not to put risk for the health of the patients, so we have not to uh, uh, give too much controlled ovarian stimulation for those patients to risk the, the ovarian overstimulation. So I think this balance and to know how to, to manage with uh, this balance is the crucial point in the clinical practice. So good prediction, good starting dose of gonotrophins, good protocol, and if these patients has a minimal risk to, uh, for the ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, then there's a strategy, and this strategy in the next year and in the next years has to be widely applied all over the world because not, so far only few people use this strategy. So this strategy uh, erases almost at zero the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. So when uh, everybody in the world will do this, then we will have reached our aim optimize the number of babies born, and uh, minimize the risk for the patients. I believe that this is uh, uh, our efforts in the real clinical practice, trying to translate what is the science research into clinical practice. So to grasp from the science research all those things that we can routinely use in the clinical practice to do our job in the best way. I think that that's the most important takeaway for me, which is the great research has to turn into great practice, which has to turn into optimized outcomes and make that take-home baby rate what it's supposed to be. Grazie mille. Prego.